Welcome everyone to exploring the data site roadmap at this session of the data site annual community meeting of 2024. I appreciate everyone's interest in this session today and I'm excited to get started. First off, a brief introduction to myself. My name is Maria Gould. I'm the product director at Datasite, joining today from my home in Portland, Oregon. And also leading the session today is product manager Cody Ross, joining from Providence, Rhode Island in the United States. So Hello. the roadmap for today's session, there will be four parts. We're going to start off with a brief introduction or reintroduction to the product team and the people who work on product at Datasite. Then we will share a little bit about how we work, how we do product development, and then get into some details about what we are currently working on and what we are thinking about for the future. And finally, we want to close with an invitation to all of you to contribute your ideas and feedback to help us shape the data site roadmap moving forward. And just to manage everyone's expectations a little bit, we have called this session Exploring the Data Site Roadmap. Uh, as I've just laid out in the roadmap for this session, we're going to be covering a lot of ground today. It's a short session, so we're really just giving you a taste of the overall journey that we are on as an organization and as a community, and look forward to participating with all of you moving forward as we continue uh, to develop and, and improve upon the work that we are doing. All right. So moving on to our first part, product work doesn't happen without people. And product at Datasite is a very product-driven process. So first off, who are the people behind the products at Datasite? We have the product team who I have just introduced and uh, perhaps our faces and names are familiar uh, to some of you already. I joined the team at the beginning of this year from California Digital Library where I supported CDL's persistent identifiers portfolio and also had the experience of being part of the data site community as a member. And some of you might also know me from my ongoing work on ROAR, the Research Organization Registry, which is a collaboration between Datasite, CDL, and Crossref. Some of you may know Cody already as well. Cody joined the product team here a few months ago, but has been at Datasite for the past couple of years now working on application support. So Cody brings a unique perspective to his product role from both the support and engineering side of things. And Cody and I are a small team. We work closely and collaboratively across the entire data site organization, which means coordinating with engineers to develop features and services. It means gathering insights from our colleagues working on member support and engagement to help better understand the community's needs and priorities. And this brings me to the outer layers of the circle. As a global community of research organizations, we are committed to working on solving problems at scale with robust open infrastructure and with responsive participatory processes. So to that end, it's absolutely essential that we actively engage with people like all of you joining this session today, members and advisors and the wider community uh, through various working groups and events um, such as this one and various communication channels to make sure that what we are doing and what we are building is aligned with all of your needs. So that's a brief introduction and reintroduction to the people that make product work happen at Datasite. So now we're going to spend a few moments talking about what do we actually mean by product? So in a business sense, product tends to be thought of as, as a good or a commodity that is developed to fill a market need and uh, to be traded or exchanged for other things of value. And this is a bit of a misnomer in the data site context because our work is really motivated by our overarching mission to 
support a more open and connected research ecosystem. But if we zoom out a little bit and think about the, the true English language dictionary definition of product, there are actually a three different notions or definitions that come into play. Product is something that is made. Product is an outcome or a result of something. And product is, is a multiplier uh, in the mathematical sense. And so all of these concepts actually do reflect the spirit in which we work on product at Datasite because we are aiming to build stable and usable and useful infrastructure that can have a, a big impact uh, on society and maximize the, the benefits for everyone. And that brings me to our overarching strategic vision at Datasite, which is connecting research and advancing knowledge or connecting research to advanced knowledge. And everything that we are doing with our product development work is designed to make this vision possible. So if we pick apart some of the words in this statement, we can think about this notion of research being our work to uh, identify and, and describe and bring together all types of outputs and entities and activities associated with research. And we think about knowledge, we think about the metadata schemas that are used to describe all of those outputs and entities and activities and the insights that we can glean from all of that information. When we think about connecting, we are working on tools and services to make it possible to connect all of these pieces of the research landscape and all of those tools and services, all of those connections being in service of enabling broader discovery and reuse of this enormous wealth of knowledge. And so all of the product work is really driven by that overarching vision and goal. And so just to orient you a little bit to what that means in a concrete sense about what we are working on, we uh, cover a lot of ground in terms of the tools and services that we developed to support core functions like registering DOIs, uh, supporting the various types of integrations that users around the world are building uh, with data site tools, with data site metadata, and then supporting broader metadata discovery and, and reuse. Uh, and this is something that will be coming into uh, play in the session following uh, immediately after this one. Uh, so we are developing these services for a broad range of users, uh, including, uh, but not limited to the data site member community, but also thinking more holistically about the wider uh, community of metadata consumers, metadata producers who are out there, infrastructure providers that are bringing tools. And so what we are really doing with the suite of tools and services that we offer at Datasite is providing a, a, a base and a foundation for metadata and insights to flow into all corners of the research landscape. So now I just want to talk a little bit about our process, uh, high level, how do we make decisions about what we work on, we have these ambitious goals, there's a lot of work on our plate, so how do we actually move work forward, and this is a constant process, it's a constant journey, we aim to work continuously and iteratively to develop solutions that meet community needs and use cases in pursuit of our overarching strategic vision. And so on the ground, we're constantly assessing what are those needs and goals? How do we address them in a proactive way? How do we make decisions about what to prioritize based on a combination of factors that might be overall alignment with our strategy, the expected impact on users, uh, available resources that we have to carry work out, uh, and then, Moving along after that, after that process of prioritization and decision making and validation, work on implementation and trying to implement in an iterative and dynamic way to keep moving forward, assess what's working, assess what else needs to be done, and rinse and repeat. So this is a constant cycle and a constant journey. And being able to engage with members and the wider community through this dynamic process of feedback, which we'll get to a little bit later on in the session, is really essential to making sure that we are making the best decisions for maximum impact. So we're really guided in this work by a few overarching principles. Uh, first is iterative development. We have to be realistic. We can't build 
everything all at once, and nor should we. So we are aiming to develop and deliver work iteratively in order to work more efficiently, to reduce complexity and confusion, and to build a foundation to keep building upon for future progress. And part of that means focusing on uh, focusing on small wins uh, and not letting the pursuit of overall perfection uh, impede progress along the way. And this means that our work is a is a it's a constant journey, as I mentioned before. We're really looking at how we can continue to improve and learn over time and as we grow. So this is a constant process of exploration and learning and using that learning, using those lessons to improve for the future and to keep moving forward. And lastly, we learn together as a team and as an organization and as a community. And we recognize that we don't work in a vacuum. We are stronger and better when we work together and we want to share what we are doing out in the open and invite everyone's participation. So now I'm going to share a brief overview of what we've been working on uh, in light of those, those processes and those higher level thinking and principles, and also talk a little bit about where we're headed and what we're thinking about for the future. So a big area of focus, a big theme uh, this year and moving forward, hence the plus in, in the heading, is about metadata. Metadata is really at the heart of what we do uh, at Datasite and as a community. And so a lot of what we have been focusing on this year and what we will continue to be focusing on is how can we support the various ways in which metadata comes into play in everything that we do. So we've been looking a lot at how to support and improve metadata quality, both as it comes in and how to enrich uh, quality uh, within the context of, of our services locally, how to uh, look at metadata diversity and broadening the types of resources and outputs and entities that we can include in data site metadata. How can we better connect all of this information and how can we make all of that metadata and all of those insights as easy as possible to be discovered and reused uh, by the world. So a few highlights from the work that we've been doing uh, so far in 2024. Uh, earlier this year, we released a new version of the metadata schema. We're already working on another version yet to come. Uh, we also, for the first time, released Datasite's first public data file uh, to make all of Datasite's metadata, all of Datasite member metadata, available to the world in a different format to support harvesting. We released the first versions of the data citation corpus, which is a unique aggregation of data citations from multiple sources as part of work that we are doing through our involvement in the Make Data Count initiative. And we've also been looking at how to support different types of discovery and connections and visualizations in the data site commons interface to surface uh, information about projects and other types of outputs and what they are connected to uh, in, in data site. And this is also something that we'll be talking about for the future. And lastly, uh, but not limited, you know, there's more to this list, uh, but uh, the last on this highlight reel is looking at how we uh, might expand uh, support for new use cases. So looking at how we can incorporate project metadata into site, into data site, looking at how we can support DOIs for awards. And so um, stay tuned for more on this front moving forward. And we can't do any of this if we don't have a really robust and stable technical stack that can scale and that can support the various types of uses that everyone needs. And so a lot of behind the scenes work has been happening to invest in updates to our technical stack for greater stability and greater scaling. So this work is ongoing. It's a constant journey, as, as I have mentioned. And so a lot of what we will be looking at as we approach the end of this year and as we look ahead to next year is how to drive forward on a number of fronts. How do we support uh, more uses of data site metadata, especially different types of services for large scale metadata harvesting. Um, this is a big topic in the session that comes right after this. Looking at how we can develop more ways of supporting metadata quality and completeness at various 
places uh, in, in the metadata journey and metadata cycle. And also what other metadata is out there? How can we bring in additional metadata to data site to connect it to other pieces of the puzzle? And what kinds of processes can we put in place to enrich this metadata to make it more, uh, more robust and more complete and more connected for everyone's benefit? And as mentioned as well, we're continuing to explore new use cases, new resource types, uh, new interests across the community for types of resources and entities that could be brought in uh, to data site to be better discovered and connected. And always should go without saying, continuing to do all of the ongoing work to support general functional improvements uh, for member community and the wider user base as well. So that's really just a taste of what's on the roadmap right now. And as we move into the session, we are looking forward to getting more ideas and, and thoughts and perspectives from all of you about uh, what else to be thinking about, how to think about priorities, and how we can better collaborate on some of these big objectives. So that brings me to part four, which is our invitation to all of you to contribute to this process and to join us on this journey. And this is also my cue to pass the mic over to Cody, who is going to uh, offer this invitation to all of you and tell you all about it. Thanks, Maria. Um, so all this work that Maria is describing, um, all the work that we are doing, all the work that we have been doing um, is shaped by community feedback. And as our community grows and as we seek uh, to address a wider range of use cases and needs, uh, we've been exploring ways to optimize the product uh, feedback process. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit right now. There we go. So we've uh, always had channels for, oops, there we go, go back one. Sorry, Maria, maybe you can take over because it's a little finicky. <laughs> but if we could go back one slide. So we've always had channels for community feedback, uh, including a roadmap uh, and suggestions portal on the data site website. Uh, but these channels have uh, become fragmented and siloed over time. So. The key areas of focus um, when we were thinking about optimizing a new and revised uh, product feedback process were making it as easy as possible for community members to participate um, and making the process more visible and easier to track. So next slide, please. So starting this month, uh, we are shifting the feedback process to GitHub and GitHub discussions. Uh, we're creating a suggestions portal um, to centralize product feedback, including uh, metadata schema suggestions. So this is where you can submit an idea, see a running list of ideas. You can also add comments to existing ideas or upvote ideas if you'd like. Um, and this is a public portal that anyone can view without needing a GitHub account. So GitHub is commonly thought of as a developer tool, um, but there are a lot of additional features for community uh, participation and project management um, that are really easy for anyone to use. Um, so you don't need to be a developer to use GitHub and you certainly don't need to be a developer to participate in uh, the suggestions portal. That said, um, if you don't want to use GitHub, uh, there are other options uh, for participating as well. So next slide. So if you do want to submit an idea on GitHub discussions, uh, which we're really excited about, you do uh, need a GitHub account. Um, there's a structured template there where you can uh, share your suggestions and describe your use case. There's also some detailed instructions on how to get to this template um, on that page. Um, but if you would prefer not to use GitHub, you uh, can just send an email to support at datasite.org and then we'll anonymize the suggestion and add it to the portal uh, for you. And you can uh, then follow along on the public portal if you'd like. Next slide. So this slide is just a, a sort of overview visual of an example of a suggestion and then also a follow-up comment uh, on a GitHub discussions. Um, so there's been a little bit of activity already um, on, on the GitHub discussions page. Next slide. 
So some key uh, points and takeaways about this new feedback process. So we're really looking forward to seeing your suggestions, comments, upvotes on this new public portal. So we do really want your feedback. Um, there are two ways to contribute. There's GitHub uh, and the data site support email. So either way is uh, perfectly fine. Um, you can follow GitHub discussions to track feedback. Um, and we're going to continue to iterate on this uh, and other product processes moving forward. So this is not uh, sort of a static thing. We're gonna keep um, advancing this and making it more transparent, more easy to use. Um, and also roadmap items and submitted feedback that existed in the previous process uh, will be uh, migrated over time. Uh, we're in the process of doing that currently. And we'll also be updating the uh, roadmap webpage soon. Next slide. So uh, we've walked through an overview of how we're thinking about product work at Datasite. We've also talked about how we're building in ways for the community to participate, including this new uh, GitHub space. Um, but we also want to take this opportunity today for everyone on the call to contribute uh, their thoughts and priorities on the product roadmap. So uh, we'd like to do an interactive uh, section session on uh, Menti. Um, and I believe there'll be a link in the chat to Menti. Yeah, so this then... is the part where we, we get you all to uh, go to menti.com and enter the code or scan the QR code and also bear with us for a minute as we switch the screen share and pull up the poll so we can see the live results coming in. So I'm going to do that right now. Yes, bear with me. just seem to have lost my window where it is being shown. <laughs> so we will be back in just a moment while you all take a minute to think about your ideas for data site product roadmap moving forward. And now let's see, is everyone seeing the presentation? Looks like we're getting some results, which I can present in a minute. I'm going to turn the screen share back on so you can see them coming in. Great, thanks, Maria. So the first uh, couple of questions are really sort of, uh, you know, just getting an idea of who's in the room. Um, so the first question is, what type of organization uh, do you represent? And it seems like we have a good amount of diversity here. Lots of research organizations, lots of infrastructure providers. One funding organization, which is great. <laughs> Welcome. That might be everybody. Um, yeah, so great. So lots, of lots of infrastructure lots of infrastructure providers, lots of others as well. Okay. So the second question, um, how do you interact with data site services? So options here are register DOIs and metadata, build integrations with data site services, Harvest DOI metadata for indexing and analyze uh, DOIs and metadata. And of course, there's a something else option with most of these questions. So if you'd like to put that in the Zoom chat, you are welcome to do that. Registering DOIs and metadata is strongly represented. So that's good to know. 
there's lots of uh, participants who are building integrations with data site services too and analyzing DOIs and metadata. So these are big use cases, of course. So great, lots of different ways of interacting with data site services, which is great. All right, I think we can move on to the next one. So um, this is to sort of follow up on the, the last question, um, which data site service is uh, most valuable to you and your organization? And you have the option of uh, picking three. So um, you also may find that something specific this is not represented here, you are um, welcome to put that in the chat as well. This is great. So a lot of interest in the REST API, Fabrica and Commons, and OAI PMH as well. Also for some from the usage tracker and MDS and API and content negotiation. So yeah, I can see some clusters around REST API, Fabrica, Commons, and OAI PMH. But of course there's many other services that we offer that people use and find value. OK, I think that might have been the last of those answers. So thank you for answering that. So I think people are already answering this question. If you could uh, wave a magic wand, what is one thing you could uh, you that one thing you wish you could do right now with data site tools or services. Maria, I think you might have to scroll up a bit. Um, to Let's get... see, yeah. And I, I'll just also mention, we deliberately put the settings in this question to limit you to one response because we're uh, just looking for, you know, looking for a little limitation in the thinking, but, there's an ability to vote on somebody else's magic wand idea. And I believe you can vote on up to five. So uh, you can go ahead and look at what else people have put on the screen if you want to um, vote on anything else besides the idea that you suggested. World peace is a strong answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we'll get on that one right uh, away. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a few about citations, um, tracking and managing citations, counting them, finding them. Um, there's bulk upload. Some about uh, metadata enrichment and enhancement, and then having that return to the local repository, which is a really interesting idea. Seems like some people are unsure of how to vote on others. Um, so maybe that didn't come through. Yeah, if you're having trouble voting, you're welcome to note it in the in the chat or um... I believe to vote, you might just need to click on one of the suggestions here, but it's a little different in my view right now. Oh, Jess suggested press enter to start voting, which maybe is the, the key. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that must be the key. So maybe that, that would cut people off. Hopefully not. Um, quality control tools. See, there's some suggestions about sort of enhancing existing metadata if, they're, if you're not the owner, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
separate APIs, databases for data sets, software, and everything else. There's a plus one for editing and enhancing. I'm assuming that means metadata from other repositories or maybe your own. Um, award PID landing pages. Another vote for uh, bulk update or bulk up uh, create. Okay, these are really good suggestions, and I think it's uh, exciting that they're aligned with um, some of our uh, the priorities that Maria was already laying out. Yes, indeed. So, Maria, I think you would have to press enter to enable voting. I'm not sure if that's something. That oh, happened. okay. I just did. So, let's see what <laughs> happens. <laughs> Hopefully we got a lot of we already got a lot of submissions there, so hopefully it doesn't cut anyone off. But um, please use the chat as well. I'm going to show the results now. I think you can continue uh, continue your voting while I do so. Okay, maybe voting didn't work, but that's okay. We're on a journey together and sometimes we hit a few bumps along the way, but I think it doesn't detract from the, the quality of the, of the ideas here. And I think we have a good sense of what people are thinking about and what's important. Do you want to move on? Uh, so everyone will be voting. Um, but uh, if you want to plus anything in the chat, please feel free to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll find other ways to do that after the call uh, on data site suggestions if you would <laughs> prefer. OK, great. So lots of ideas. Um, these are really helpful, and some that are already ones that we are uh, considering and thinking about. Access to domain experts that can advise on user DOI workflows. That's one that I didn't see already. So that's a really interesting idea for a service. Mm -hmm. OK. All right, let's see that's, move on. Query that's the only one I missed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Easily query and combine all metadata fields, including counting citations. That's a, yeah, querying is a big use case that we uh, want to accommodate um, and make flexible. Okay, great. So I think we can move on to, I believe is the last question. So uh, this is sort of a remix of the previous question. Um, what is the most important thing you would like to see on the data site product roadmap in 2025? Could be the same thing that you put on the last slide, or it could be something else that just occurred to you. Metadata in the PID record, provenance, use case recommendations for how best to use. Um, let's see, yeah, that got moved, but I think it was something along the lines of RAID. <laughs> um, yes, pittance, RAID, et cetera. So more resource types. Uh, with defined metadata fields, not general. Okay, so the the free text resource type is that. 
what you're referring to. So make data count as a big priority. Uh, more award information. Uh, is that about award award metadata? Uh, more clarity on cross-reference data site award IDs. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Okay, the bulk update, yes. Thank you for that. Uh, more mandatory metadata fields to improve quality. That's a really good consideration for the metadata working group. Built-in quality control tools, maybe some guidelines for improving records with the PID, sorry, a little bit blower. There we go. With the PID leveraging in mind. Okay, yes. Official metadata dictionary to other schemas. That's really a helpful idea. Analyze citation and provenance. Um, citation counts. So lots of interest in citations references. Include recommendations from open air for rights to describe if the resource is restricted or open access. That's also really helpful. So yeah, it's interesting that a lot of these are advisory. I know that there are a few that are feature oriented too. So it's great that everyone wants to improve their metadata <laughs> and get good advice on it. Okay. So I think that might be the last, of course, um, you can continue participating in this session by leaving a, a message in the chat. We also um, really uh, look forward to you participating in data site suggestions and leaving your suggestion there and looking at the ones that are already submitted. Um, so please take some time to look at that um, after, or, you know, as time as time permits. Um, and yeah, I will let Maria close out the session, but thank you so much for participating. Yeah, thank you all for those suggestions. And uh, again, just to echo Cody, uh, we want to continue this conversation with all of you. Uh, we want to continue to hear your feedback and suggestions and the new portal uh, on, on GitHub, which we'll drop another link to if you need it again, is the best place to do that. And we also want to continue having different kinds of conversations like these where we can talk in person and have different kinds of exercises on prioritization and brainstorming. So we really look forward to continuing to talk about all of this with, with all of you as we move forward. So please stay engaged, please keep in touch. Let us know what you need, how oh, we can help, how we can work better together. Sorry, ahead, Marika. Um, there are some still some questions in the Q&A. Um, um, would you like oh. to address those? Sure, let me take a quick look. I think it was not showing up during the, uh, in the screen share. Yes, some of them have been answered already, but uh, yeah, okay. I will check. Yeah, great. I'll just scan through these quickly um, and address a couple of these right away. Um, so starting with, with Jez. Um, so uh, this switch to GitHub and the suggestions portal is, is a new process. Uh, so the change is that we, we are right now um, actively encouraging submitting issues um, to GitHub. I think in the past, we didn't have a specific space on GitHub to bring in uh, these kinds of feature requests and ideas. And so what's new right now is that we've created this portal to consolidate that and then to connect it to the other repositories and other places where the team works um, in GitHub. So it's really specific to product suggestions, um, feature requests. It doesn't change the standard workflows that we have 
for, for troubleshooting. So for the support kinds of issues or bug issues that may come up, um, this is not a change to those practices. Emailing support is still the best way to address that, but uh, the new GitHub space is meant to be uh, focused on soliciting feedback about, uh, about new products and services or enhancements to, to existing ones. Uh, but also, we're not necessarily requiring GitHub if it's something you don't feel comfortable with. So we still have the support email as a conduit for that information as well. Uh, to Vida's question, uh, we are looking at having the, the current roadmap was based on a, a different tool called, or the prior roadmap was based on a different cool tool called Product Board. And so uh, as part of migrating from the old Product Board space, we will be setting up uh, a new visual roadmap using uh, using GitHub, and that will be on the, on the data site website and available in, in GitHub as well. So I think those are two questions logistically about the processes moving forward. Um, and then to Golix, this sounds like perhaps something that we can handle over support and figure this out because uh, Golix should still actively be in play. Um, so perhaps that's something that we can follow up um, with you, Walter, afterwards on support. If you're seeing some issues with links. All right, so taking one more look at the chat. Uh, I know we do want to kind of wrap things up to allow time to transition to the next sessions. There's a full day ahead of us and a lot that's already happened on this day of community meetings. So we appreciate everyone's attendance and everyone's interest and everyone's participation.